Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello everybody. So glad that you are here. So glad that you guys are here. So it's been a while since I have done one of these uh, online teachings. And so I wanna welcome you if this is your first time ever tuning in to one of my videos. My name is Casey Star Long. And let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. My husband and I, we are campus pastors with Church in Action, one of the best churches in the planet. And uh, our senior pastors are Darnell and Rochelle West. I'm an author. Um, let's see, I host a Christian talk show called the Inspired Overflow Radio Show. And really, I just try to live a life uh, just being obedient to the Lord. And I really felt like um, the Lord just put on my heart to uh, lead an online teaching tonight about uh, digging up the roots of jealousy, comparison, and competition. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'm so glad that you're here. Do me a favor and just share, just share, just hit share and share this teaching. I want to give a shout out to all of you that will be watching this broadcast on YouTube. So I know I have some folks that connect with me via YouTube. And so God bless each and every one of you. I'll be reading your uh, comments as you post them. And so I see April's here. Hey, April, good to see you. All right. Great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Awesome. Well, so glad that you guys have tuned in on tonight. So let's just go ahead and open up uh, with prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I ask Lord that you just bless this time. God, I ask Lord that I just move out of the way and that God, you just speak through me, Father. I pray, God, that, Lord, those that will listen, those that will watch this teaching, Father, I ask, God, that you will speak to them and that you will minister to them, Father. I ask, God, that you will just move any deception, Father, and just, Holy Spirit, you come in and do what you do. Break strongholds, break bondages, illuminate, pro provide revelation. And God, may you be glorified through this teaching. God, may you be glorified, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, as you guys can see, the title for tonight's Bible study is called Why Her? Uprooting Jealousy, Competition, and Comparison. And um, I got this uh, title from a book that I read called Why Her? Um, and the author, her name is Nikki Koziars. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering um, her last name, but... Um, it's, I read this book uh, through Proverbs 31 Ministries, and um, I read this book because I felt like God was really talking to my heart and really dealing with me about a spirit of jealousy, a spirit of competition, and a spirit of pride. Um, I really felt like God was putting that on my heart, that, um, that this was some forms of bondages that he wanted to remove from my life. And um, if this is your first time ever really following my ministry or following my teaching, uh, what I try to say all the time is that um, I heard this from a lady named Marissa Payne, who's in St. Louis, but her and her husband, they were teaching and they were like, let our life be a classroom. And I really feel like that's the kind of ministry that God has given me to just be transparent and to just, just be vulnerable. So a lot of times throughout tonight, you'll hear me say us and we, <laughs> because you know, um, there's still some things that God is working out in me. You know, I don't present this information. I'm not leading tonight's online Bible study um, from a position of I got it all together because honestly, you guys, there are some moments, there are some times in my life where I have to like, you know, kind of like steady myself in the word of God and say, you know what? I am not going to allow the spirit of competition to come into my heart. I'm not going to be jealous of my sister. So I find myself um, even kind of dealing with this for the past year and a half, but there are still moments where I have to anchor myself in the word of God and just say, no, you know, you spirit, you're not coming in. And one of the things, hello, Jessica, good to see you. And one of the things that we'll talk about tonight is that the spirits of jealousy, competition, and pride, those are demonic spirits. Those come in from the enemy to bring division, to bring a spirit of insecurity. Those spirits uh, bring in like a spirit of scarcity 
where it takes the takes our eyes off of God and his wonderful, abundant nature, right? It, it takes our perspective and moves it off of God to a place of discontentment. And that's exactly where the enemy wants us to be. All right, so let's just go ahead and hop in. So I kind of shared a little bit about, you know, why I felt like God put this on my heart. And it's really funny, you guys, because at the end of last year, I really felt like God was like, Casey, I want you to do an online Bible study on jealousy and competition. I really want you to lead it. And I was like, okay, God, I'll do it. And I created the flyer and I kind of pushed it back a couple of months later. I was like, I'll market it. I'll get it out there. And then life happened and I never got to it. And this week, I really felt like God was like, Casey, I need you to do this Bible study. And so I was like, okay, God, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to delay. So here we are. And um, God first began to speak to me about jealousy and about a spirit of competition and pride uh, one day when um, I was actually scrolling through Facebook. And if somebody would have said, Casey, are you jealous? Do you have like a spirit of jealousy? Do you deal with jealousy, competition and, you know, comparison? Do you deal with that? I would have been like, absolutely not. No way. Like I'm God's cheerleader. I'm cheering for everybody. I want everybody to win. So I thought. But while going through social media one day, I came across a woman who has an amazing international ministry. Um, she's actually based um, in the lower region of the United States. Um, and her and her husband, they have a dynamic ministry. And um, I followed her ministry for the past couple of years. And uh, she announced on Facebook one day, I was actually sitting here in my prayer room. I should have been praying, but I was scrolling through social media, I guess scrolling through before I would start praying or whatever. But I was sitting here scrolling through social media right here in my prayer room. And I came across one of her Facebook posts and she's like, hey, guys, guess what? You know, um, I'm going to have my own syndicated a television talk show and it's going to be on this Christian network and they're uh, they're going to allow me to be the uh, producer of my own show. So that means that I get to uh, bring my own guests. I get to develop my own content and hey, uh, message me if you want to be on my show. And so when I saw that post, you guys, I was so jealous. I was angry at God because she didn't know this, but that was my prayer request. So I mentioned earlier that I'm on the radio here in St. Louis, but my big dream is to have my own syndicated talk show on a Christian a national network. And so that's something that I've been praying to God about, and it's been spoken over my life, and it hasn't come to pass. And it was so funny because uh, there is a time here in St. Louis when I used to have um, a television show on a local access channel here in St. Louis. And I had creative control and I would talk to my husband and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, whenever I do get a show, I must have creative control. I want to be the executive producer. I want to be able to bring in my own guest and to read this woman in ministries Facebook post where she was basically articulating everything that I had prayed to God about to like the, the most minute details about her having creative control. And it's on this network. Y'all, I was just livid at God. I was like, God, how can you give her, you know, my my prayer request? God, what about me? And so um, immediately as I began to like, you know, complain to God, I actually left my prayer room, stormed into the bedroom, and I like showed up the phone to my husband. And I was like, hey, look, you know, look at this. And, you know, he's probably just looking at me like I'm crazy. But after I went over the rant, I came back into my prayer room. And I was like, God, I know better. I was like, I know better. I know better to be jealous um, of my sister in Christ. God, she's serving you. Her whole family serving you. God, she's a, a great role model for other women in the body of the Christ. I know better. But God, this is in my heart and I need to get this out of my heart. I'm feeling really jealous. I'm like comparing my life with hers. And I'm like, God, I need your help to get this jealousy out of my heart. And so it was from there that God led me to this book called Why Her, uh, which is available by Nikki Koziars, which is available on amazon.com. 
I read the book. I actually did a Bible study through Proverbs 31 Ministries. Um, basically, I was just committed. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the work um, to get my heart right. And uh, that's one of the first things that I want to talk to you about is that, first of all, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves when we know that we're dealing with feelings of jealousy, envy, and comparison. We got to be honest with the condition of our hearts. And then we have to be willing to do the work. Now, sometimes we can pray to God and be like, you know what, God, take it out of my heart. Just do the work. And sometimes God supernaturally does that. Um, when I used to be a drinker, God did that, right? God, he took He took the taste of alcohol out of my mouth, right? Um, but I will also say that there have been some things where God is just like, okay, you prayed to me about this. Now I'm going to walk you through the steps for deliverance. And so it has been a process of walking through the steps for deliverance to break free from the bondages of jealousy, competition, and comparison. And so I'm just going to share with you some things tonight um, that God has placed on my heart to help you walk through um, to just break free. Because here's the thing, God desires for you to be free. Um, anytime you feel like that nagging feeling going through social media or hearing about someone else's good news and you can't fully celebrate them, um, if you feel just kind of like a drawback spirit, um, that is, that's a sign um, that there is some bondage that needs to be broken off. And here's the great thing about God. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the word of God says that whom the son is set free is free indeed. We can ask God to say, hey, you know what? Set me free. I want to be free. I, I want to be able to be a cheerleader. I want to be able to be a supporter of everybody. I don't want to compare myself with other people. All right. So one of the things that we have to understand is that the enemy hates a unity. So the enemy, of course, loved the idea of me being upset at God for blessing one of my sisters in Christ. All right. Psalm 133 talks about there's a commanded blessing when the brethren, when the brothers and sisters of Christ dwell in unity. So think it not strange when the enemy tries to sow division. Think it not strange when the enemy tries to sow strife and discord and have you start comparing yourself with others. Satan doesn't want the body of Christ to be unified. He wants us to be divided. The word of God talks about that a divided kingdom cannot stand. So if Satan can sow discord in your life, if he can get you comparing yourself or if he can get you in a competition, with your other sisters and brothers in Christ who, by the way, have no idea that they're in a competition with you. Satan loves that. I'm reminded of John chapter 17, one of the last prayers that Jesus prayed, right? Before he was to be crucified, he prayed to God. He said, God, you know, um, may we be, may the people see that we are one, you know, and may they be one with us so that they will know God that you sent me. So that was the prayer that Jesus prayed, that we would be in unity, that we would be part of the body of Christ. And so I knew that. I knew that, you know, even those feelings of jealousy and comparison and inadequacy, um, I knew that when those feelings came up about my sister in Christ, I was like, wait a second. This is demonic. This is from the enemy. And I'm not going to start looking at her, throwing shade at her and not being happy and celebrating her success. So later on, I'm going to tell you a remedy that God gave me to help me break free from that bondage, particularly concerning her and her ministry. Let's look at a couple of scriptures to see what does God say? What does his word say about uprooting jealousy and um, uprooting competition and comparison? And I want you to do me a favor. Go ahead and share this broadcast. You never know that there may be people on your timeline who might be interested in this discussion. Also, after I get done teaching, I will take a few questions and answers. So if you have any questions, go ahead and just type them up in the comments. I really would love for this to be interactive, for this to be an interactive online Bible study. All right. Galatians 5 and 17. All right. It lets us know that our sinful nature opposes our sinful nature wants to do the opposite of what the spirit desires to do. Galatians 5 and 17 through 19, it lets us know that our flesh 
and our spirit are constantly opposing each other. I don't know about you, but, um, you know, like we all go through seasons. I felt like um, before I got called into full-time ministry, I used to be a politician and I was winning or, or winning according to the world's ways, right? Success came very easy. Um, a lot of success, a lot of acclaim, it came easy. And it seems that um, some things happened, some circumstances, some life, some life situations happened. I gave my life to Christ and things changed. I no longer had my political position. I no longer had um, I no longer had that that platform. And uh, it seems as if I'm um, just just stating it really plainly. It seemed as if, you know, that winning streak was broken. And I really believe that God has done that to bring humility. Um, he's done that to, to bring me into his presence, um, that God is intentional in everything. Um, but with that being said, if you find yourself in a situation where things may not always be working toward your favor and you see uh, those who are your peers winning, it can be difficult to celebrate them. Right. Our flesh wants to get in our feelings. Our flesh wants to compare ourselves. Our flesh wants to hold back on applause and celebration. And the scripture lets us know that our flesh and spirit are always constantly fighting against each other. But Romans chapter eight lets us know that when we walk by the spirit, when we live by the spirit, you know, that that's the, that's a uh, life and peace when we live by the spirit. So I say all of this to say is that think it not strange when your flesh wants to be jealous, when your flesh wants to compare, um, it's not something natural to celebrate people when they have something that you think you need or something that you think you want. But the Bible tells us that our flesh and spirit, they're always going to be opposed to each other. But here's the thing as believers, we bring our flesh into submission. So when um, I came across that instance of that woman in ministry, where my flesh really wanted to be jealous and envious about her, I really got to a space and I said, you know what? Flesh, you're not going to rule me. This is not of God. So God, help me if I have to fast. God, I'll read the book. I'm busy. I'm busy, God, but I'll read the book. I'll go through the six-week online Bible study. I'll do whatever because I want my heart to be pure. And let me tell you, it's a constant battle, okay? It's a constant battle. And what I what I um, just kind of say in my spirit and in my mind is, devil, you're going to get tired of coming at, coming at me with this fight because I'm going to win. So scrolling through social media, I see other women in Christ, they're winning, their businesses are prospering, they're having babies. Look, I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating hearts, likes, high fives, praying for them, all of those things, because why? I'm pushing past that flesh. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to command my flesh and my heart to walk in the spirit, the spirit of jealousy, uh, competition and comparison. It doesn't have any rule over me. Right. Um, I know like back in the day, they, they used to say, look, you got to get about it, about it with it. And look, that's how I am. I'm like, look, I'm going to get about it, about it with Satan. He's not going to have control over me. All right. Galatians 5 and 16. It says, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives so you won't do what the sinful nature craves. So I kind of talked a little bit about that. You know, look, my flesh, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to rule over me. Right. I live by the spirit. So I'm going to do what the spirit of God says. All right. I see you guys' comments. Thank you guys so much for commenting. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for making this interactive. It makes it much easier for me. All right. So let's look at another scripture. This is from um, Paul, the Apostle Paul. First Corinthians chapter three, verses three. And I was reading this this morning and I was like, wow. The Apostle Paul, he was disgusted. It sounded like he was just pretty fed up with this group. And what he's saying to them is that, look, y'all are still on spiritual milk. You guys are envying each other. You're provoking each other. You're living like the world. You know, the, the Apostle Paul is saying, y'all are jealous. That's what the world does. That's what babes do. You know, God, uh, pa Apostle Paul is like, look, I'm ready for you to, you should be on strong meat by now. And so, you know, these are just scriptures letting us know that, wait a second, 
You know, this is not the will of God to be comparing ourselves and to be envious with others. And here's another scripture in Proverbs 14 and 30. It says, look, envy's, envy makes the bones rot. And envy is, is that when we start comparing ourselves or desiring something that someone else has. And I think it's really important, especially for my sisters who are in ministry, right? That we can start envying uh, what someone else has. God, you know, why did she get that speaking engagement? You know, I'm here fasting, I'm praying. God, you know, my phone is not ringing. You know, God, why does it seem that that they're blessed, that, you know, they're able to start this business or they're able to do that? But this scripture lets us know that envy makes the bones rot. And, you know, we're seeing like diseases, osteoporosis, arthritis. You know, a lot of times um, physical conditions have spiritual roots, right? And um, basically what happens is, is that when we become envious, when we start comparing ourselves with others, basically that takes the joy out of our lives. That takes the joy out of our spirit. And guess what? It causes the bones to rot. You know, I don't believe that this is just something like an illustration or whatever that Solomon just came up with, but I believe it's real life. You know, that there's no joy, there's no blood flow circulating through our veins because we're just bitter and we're just resentful and we're just angry. And here's another thing that I think is important is that envy and jealousy, um, the, the root of that is um, ingratitude. <laughs> that when we start envying others and when we start comparing uh, what others have and what we don't, you know, the root of that is ungratefulness. But when we find ourselves being in a grateful state, thanking God for whatever it is that we have, whatever open door, whatever business, whatever level of success, whatever friendships, relationships, whatever finances that we may have, when we find ourselves in a state of gratefulness, there is no need to compare. There's no need to be envious of what God is doing in the life of another sister. Now, here's a scripture that really got me when I first began to study this. And it comes from James chapter three, verses 14 through 16. But what it talks about is that the root of jealousy is demonic. It comes from Satan, right? You know, you don't just feel jealous. It didn't just happen to, you know, come out of the sky and fall on you. But no, this is this is a tactic from Satan. Um, it's an assignment from Satan to divide you, to uh, get you upset with God, uh, to distract you. It is truly, <coughs> excuse me, it's truly a demonic orchestration by the devil. And it says that where there is jealousy, there is chaos and evil. Now, um, I mean, we could talk about, we see, we can see like jealousy, um, like in relationships, right? You ever been jealous of uh, someone who maybe was dating somebody that you wanted to date and, you know, you kind of start acting crazy, you know, stalkerish, you know, but where jealousy is, what happens is it opens up the door for different kinds of spirits to come in. We see rage. We even see murder. We even see violence. Um, we even see suicide. You know, we even, you know, see death. You know, what happens is, is because it's demonic, we give the devil a foothold. And so that's why it is so important that we really need to be like David, where he's like, God, search me. Show me if there's anything in me that's not of you. You know, show it, expose it to me. God, if there's any um, jealousy, God, comparison, competition, let me know. Um, and I find myself doing this regularly. Um, recently, I was just scrolling through social media. And as I was scrolling through, you guys, maybe I need to get off of social media for a little bit. But as I was scrolling through, you know, I just kind of had just some negative comments of people just in my mind. You know how you just kind of scroll through and, you know, what I had to say about people, it was not very kind. And, um, you know, I realized that, um, that the root of it was jealousy, that the root of it was envy. You know, kind of like the stuff, well, why are they always posting about this? That's not a big deal. That's not really post worthy. I mean, these people, they just post every little thing. These were the thoughts in my mind. They weren't nice. And God began to just show the root is, Casey, is it jealousy? Do you feel inadequate because they're celebrating their success? Why so negative? Why not celebrating them? What's the root of that? And so I had to say, you know what, God, you're absolutely right. 
So God, help me. You're absolutely right. You know, the reason why I'm annoyed or frustrated is because maybe my life, I, I don't feel like I should be where, where I want to be, or I don't feel like I am where I should be. Like there's this spirit of inadequacy and insecurity in me. And so if I see someone who's celebrating what God is doing in their life, that makes me feel some kind of way. So we're talking today about how to deal and uproot jealousy, competition, and comparison. And it requires us being honest with ourselves. I remember going to a women's conference and I was actually one of the speakers and um, I was participating on a panel. And one of the questions was, how do you deal with jealousy? You know, how do you deal with um, being envious of other women? And um, when I went, thank you, Sequoia. (laughs) Sequoia says, I love your transparency. Look, you know what? You guys, there's no use of me doing this if I'm not going to be transparent. One of the things I love about is Joyce Myers, that she's so transparent. And again, I really feel like with the ministry God has given me and also my husband, we we um, help we we operate in a deliverance ministry by being vulnerable and by being transparent. Um, but anyway, so I was on a panel and um, one of the questions was, you know, how do you deal with um, jealousy? And um, I was getting ready to answer the question, but there was just like some chatter from the audience. And so many of the women in the audience were like, I don't get jealous. I am, you know, I am fearfully and wonderfully made and I have nothing to be jealous about uh, with anybody. I like me. I'm happy with what God has done in my life and I'm not jealous. Uh, Do you see me? You know, and I was just kind of like, hmm. I was like, well, praise the Lord if none of them have ever felt jealous of another woman in ministry, if they've never felt jealous of anybody, you know, praise the Lord. That has not been uh, my situation. And so maybe there are some people there that have never experienced jealousy. I will say that um, I don't think that jealousy was an issue. Um, it, It wasn't an issue when I felt I was when I had, you know, my professional success. Right. Um, that, that wasn't an issue. So I do believe that maybe there are seasons where you're like, I'm good. You know, I can celebrate everybody, but then maybe, you know, there might become a time where, you know, the feelings of jealousy might come in. And so, um, hopefully this Bible study will help you if you go through that season. All right. Um, so let's see. We talked a couple, we talked um, about some of the scriptures. And so let's kind of talk about how do we uproot the spirit of jealousy, comparison, and competition. All right. And I want to just say something a little bit about competition um, because I know my husband is watching. He's doing a whole bunch of stuff tonight, but I know he's watching. But I also want to share about the spirit of competition. I've been talking a lot about jealousy, but competition is really subtle. And competition can exist in ministry. We see it in churches a lot of times um, in comparison. They're, they're really cousins. And if you're not careful, you can find yourself comparing your ministry, comparing your business, comparing your church with others. And social media is a great tool to make that happen. And um, when we when my husband and I first got married, um, both of us were in ministry and we each had our individual ministries. I had my radio show. Um, At that time, I was having a lot more speaking engagements than I do now. And my husband um, had a prison ministry and he still does have a prison ministry. Um, But there was like this subtle tug of war of competition between the two. And it's really silly and it's really stupid because we're one body. We're one flesh. We've gotten married. We support each other. But there was this there was this tension. There was this competitive streak. Well, what's going on with your ministry? Oh, this person donated to my ministry. Oh, this person said that they wanted to help with my ministry. Well, what's going on with yours? There was just this um, demonic presence in our marriage where we were on the same team, but competing also. And um, it was really funny that before we got married, um, we would fast and pray for our future marriage every Friday. And we still do that now as husband and wife. But one time as we were fasting and praying, God gave us a word for our marriage. And it was a word of warning. And God was like, do not let the spirit of competition get in the midst of your marriage. If you do, you're going to destroy your marriage. 
God was like, I called you to to work on a team, that there will be no I spirit. There will be no individual stuff. And so we had to learn very, very early on in our marriage of how to work together as one. And really, you guys, we had to fast and pray. We had some arguments. We had to have some real conversations about not being competitive, that we are on one team. It's not about one person's ministry goes higher than the other. It, that's crazy. It's nuts. But if you have an unrestrained flesh or if you're not careful, that subtle feeling of competition will come in. You'll find yourself competing with others that you're supposed to be on the same team with. The devil will have you competing with your God ordained teammates. We're all part of the body of Christ. And so um, the author, Nikki, in this book called Why Her, she talks about that another woman's gain does, is not your loss. You know, that if my husband wins, if he gets a speaking engagement or if God blesses his ministry with a tremendous donation or a, a great open door, you know, his gain is not my loss. We're on the same team. And so I had to renew my mind to that. And I believe that God had to renew his mind. And, and you know, we had to we had to walk that thing out. But it's crazy how if you're not careful, the enemy will try to bring in division while you're doing God's work. While you're doing God's work, one of the things that God has put on my heart um, is to start a nonprofit and a social enterprise through the nonprofit. And so I have to realize, wait a second, I'm not comparing myself. I'm not in competition with other nonprofits. You know, um, being in politics, coming from a political background, things were very competitive. I remember being like on the board of aldermen and, you know, we would kind of guard legislation. Well, I don't want this person to know what I'm working on because they might steal. They might take my idea. Um, it was very competitive, which is really strange and which is really not good because, hey, we've all been elected to build up our city, to create legislation, to improve the lives of all citizens. But guess what? That nasty demonic devil comes in and that's where competition and comparison come in because it's a it's a spirit of scarcity right it's a spirit of scarcity it's a, a poverty spirit where god can only bless me that if he blesses someone else and that means that there isn't any blessing for me that is a spirit of deception by the enemy so if you find yourself comparing or you find yourself competitive with people that you work with, people in your family. What you need to do is pull down that stronghold, right? We know that God, he, um, he provides all of our needs. We know that he has, you know, the cattle on a thousand hills. We know that God is a God of abundance, that he can do an exceedingly and abundantly all that you can ever ask for or think that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what he has in store for those who love him. Right. God is not a, a, a God of lack. You know, if God blesses another brother or sister in Christ, it doesn't mean that he gave them all of the blessings and he doesn't have anything for you. And so, you know, I had to, and I still do, I still have to square myself in the word of God and say, you know what, if those feelings of competition or comparison start coming in saying, you know what, devil, you're a liar. That as God bless them, he can bless me. And so I celebrate their success. I'm, I'm hearting that post on Facebook. You know, I'm sending you, I'm a sow a seed. Look, the devil gets really mad, you know, every time I sow a seed. Give me some money, God, give me seed for the sower so I can sow a seed, so I can bless what they're doing. Let me buy a book. <laughs> Let me invite somebody on my broadcast. Let me bless them. You know, the devil, he gets, he gets in a conniption fit when that happens. All right. So just talking a little bit about comparison, talking a little bit about um, competition, all of that stuff. You know, we're not going to take it. We're not going to handle. We're not going to allow that to come in. Do me a favor and share. Share this broadcast because there's somebody on your timeline that needs to hear what we are talking about tonight. All right. OK, so let's talk about. How do we uproot the spirit of competition, jealousy, and pride? I got five tips that I want to share with you. Number one, you got to admit that you have a problem. So I mentioned early on in the broadcast of how I was jealous of my sister in ministry. 
God blessed her with a syndicated talk show on the Christian network. That was my prayer request. <laughs> but you know what? I had to admit, wait a second, Casey, you're all riled up. You didn't left the prayer room. You didn't throw the phone at your husband and you're ranting and raving. You know, I had to admit, wait a second, God, I got a problem. I'm feeling jealous. I had to admit that. I'm sure there's a scripture that talks about that. Look, when we ask, God will, God will meet our need when we're honest, right? When we're honest. And so um, I came back to my prayer room and I just began to pray, right? After I had my rant, I just began to pray and I began to repent because I was like, God, I know that this feeling is not of you, but God, I need you to work on my heart. And so God, I need you to lead me and help me do um, whatever I need to do. Um, so, so this spirit of jealousy and envy will not contaminate my heart. I don't want it to contaminate my heart. And, uh, number five, I'm going to tell you the remedy that God uh, gave for me to do. All right. So we want to admit that we have a problem. The second thing is, is that you got to set your mind that you will set your mind on God's word. And here's what I mean. Um, so we know that the word of God talks about in second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three through five that we don't war against flesh and blood. So we know that anytime the spirit of jealousy, competition, comparison, it's demonic. It's sent from the, from the enemy to distract you, to get you upset with God, to get you unfocused, where you don't see all the great things that God is doing in your life. And all you can do is think about what you don't have. So the word of God says that when those thoughts come, we must pull them down and bring them into captivity, into the word of God, right? So um, the negative thoughts, so let, let me give you an example. Comparing my ministry with somebody else's ministry. God, you opened up the door. Uh, they get to travel. And God, they have like a greater platform. I'm still here in St. Louis. <laughs> I'm still here in St. Louis, God, you know, like, what's up? Like, I'm looking at, you know, what you've given me and what you've given, you know, my sisters in Christ and, you know, God, what's up? You know, what's up? Um, and then what happens is, is when we begin to compare, guess what? That opens up the door for insecurity. And so here comes the devil. Well, you're really not good enough. You're really not that great of a speaker. Or maybe people just don't like you. They don't like the content. You know, they just don't get you. And so, you know, maybe you should just be quiet and, you know, shut down your ministry and do something else. So what happens is, is that when we start comparing ourselves, here comes the spirit of insecurity. Um, here comes, you know, low self-esteem and all this other mess, all this other garbage. And so when those thoughts come in, I have to pull those thoughts down and I have to bring them into captivity, into God's word. I have to say, wait a second. I know the enemy is barraging my mind with all of this junk. But wait, God, what does your word say? You know, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am accepted and beloved. And God, if people may not get what I'm saying in this season, they may not get me. That's okay. I'm accepted and I'm beloved by you. God, I know that you have a plan and a purpose for me. It may not look like anybody else, but God, I trust your plan and your purpose for me. God, it's all about you. It's all about you. If no one ever calls my name, I still love you and I still serve you. And so God, I'm just going to stay planted and I'm just going to do what you've called me to do. And so, you know, it's just like getting our mind into the obedience of the word of God, you know, pulling all that junk out and just setting our mind on the word of God. And so let me tell you something. You know, Satan is always bombarding us with comparison and being envy, envious and all of that. He would love to get us um, off, off track, but we have to set our minds that we're going to set our mind on the word of God and on his truth. And no, I'm not going to be moved. And here's another thing that I think is important is we don't beat ourselves up when those thoughts come, right? Because, I mean, you know, Satan will try to send the thoughts, but we don't have to receive them. So you're not beating yourself up like, oh, I feel jealous again, or oh, I went on social media and oh, that feeling of insecurity came up and I, 
oh, that those thoughts of comparison came up. No, we don't beat ourselves up when those thoughts come. But what we do do is say, you know what? Those thoughts are not going to remain. I'm bringing them into captivity. I'm going to do what Philippians chapter four says, and I'm going to think of things that are true. I'm going to think of things that are lovely. I'm going to think of things that are pure. You know, I'm going to think about myself that way. I'm going to think about my sisters in Christ that way. Mm -mm. None of those negative trash None of that negative trash is coming into my brain and it's not coming into my heart. All right. So we set our mind. The third, the third, okay. The third step. I kind of talked about this. We bring every thought captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Number four, <laughs> this is a big one. All right. This is my fourth tip. All right. And this is it. But we pray for those that we find ourselves jealous are competitive with, or we find ourselves comparing ourselves with. So remember the sister in Christ, the dear sister in Christ um, that I mentioned at the beginning about how I felt jealous about her, right? God's expanding, God's promoting, God's doing wonderful things in our ministry. And um, so when I came back here in the prayer room, God was like, I want you to pray for her. I want you to pray that she'll be blessed. I want you to just pray blessings upon her marriage and blessings, you know, over her life. And I'm like, God, she's already blessed. She got what I've been asking for. She's pretty blessed. She does not need my prayers. I mean, she's going to be more blessed than me if I continue to pray for her. Right. You know, um, <laughs> but I believe that God had me pray for her to work out some things in my heart. And um, and so God um, has used her and he's used other people that if I feel like a slight you know, nudge where mm, I'm starting to feel a little, you know, com competitive. I pray and I intercede for those individuals. Why? Because I do not want my heart to get contaminated, right? Um, that out of the the issues of the heart, you know, out of the issues of life flow out of the heart. Yes. Issues of life flow out of the heart. I don't want my heart to get contaminated. Who can ascend the mountain of God? The one with clean hands and a pure heart. I need my heart clean as a prophetic voice, as a pastor, as a wife, as a friend, as a daughter, as a sister. I need my heart clean. And so this is a great tip for you. Anybody God puts on your heart, the Holy Spirit puts on your heart, you intercede for them and you pray for them. And here's a quote from Joyce Meyer where she says, have you ever been disappointed when someone else was given the privilege of doing something in ministry that you wanted to do? Joyce Meyer says, rather than be frustrated or discouraged, follow David's example in 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verses 6 through 11. She says, bless the efforts, bless their efforts, pray for them that they might have wisdom and encourage them in prayer to keep following the Lord in all they do that they may prosper and that God will be. And, and then she says that when you do that, God will be faithful to honor you. So we're not praying just like, oh, God, bless them. <laughs> oh, God, touch their family. Da -da 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 -da. Bless their ministry. Bless their business. Bless their job. No, we're praying. We're interceding. We're covering them in prayer. Why? Because we're on the same team. And that when she wins, guess what? You win too. And her gains don't necessarily mean your loss. We're part of one body. And when we begin to intercede and when we begin to pray, that keeps our hearts pure. And I tell you what, when we do that, that really gives the devil a nervous breakdown. And as my husband says, look, when you keep doing the opposite of what the devil wants you to do, He's going to stop messing with you in that area because he's going to be like, look, I'm not going to try to bring a spirit of jealousy, comparison and competition to, to so and so, because every time I do that, they pray. And every time they pray, they get stronger and stronger in the Lord. So I'm going to find something else to bother them with. <laughs> and so, you know, guess what? We just continue to strike the ground every time a thought comes up. Or, you know, an image comes up that doesn't line up with the word of God. You strike the ground and you pray. You're going through social media and a little thing, little thought pops into your mind. Oh, God bless them. Lord, cover them. Yeah, I'm sowing hearts. That's what I do on Facebook. I sow hearts, not likes. Most of the time I'm sowing hearts. 
Yes, I'm sowing a heart into you because why? I believe in you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Keep going. We're part of the same team. Why? Because that keeps my heart pure. I want my heart to be pure. I don't want it to be contaminated. And I got to be honest with myself. I got to be honest with God. God, I'm a wreck. I'm a mess without you. God, I come to you humbly, God. Clean. Wash my heart purify my heart, God. You see what's on the inside. Other people may not see all that stuff on the outside. They see nice, sweet casing and all of that. Praise the Lord. But God, you know the inside. And God, I want my heart to be clean. I refuse. I refuse to let the enemy come in and contaminate my heart with jealousy, competition, and comparison. I refuse. And that's how you got to be. You got to stand and you just got to take a stand and say, I refuse to be in bondage to these spirits. Why? Because Jesus died on the cross and he rose for you to be free, not for you to be in bondage to any type of demonic harassing spirit. Jesus died for you to be free and you are free. So you take a stand and you walk through those steps and you make up your mind and say, mm -mm, I'm a pray. Then when you begin to pray, you begin to declare the word of God over those people, over those individuals, over those circumstances. Guess what? It breaks Satan's hold over your heart and over your life. All right, you guys, I pray that you've been blessed with this Bible study. Let me know if you have any questions I'm going through and I see all of your comments. Yes, I see my mom has tuned in. Hey, mom, she says pure and clean heart. Yes, a pure and clean heart. Absolutely. All right, Ramona, I see that you had to step away, but I'm so glad that you were able to get some of this good teaching on tonight. All right, you guys, I pray that you will share this broadcast with others. And I pray that it has been a blessing for you. Just a couple of announcements that I want to make sure that you know about. Again, I encourage you to get the book by uh, Nikki Koziars. Oh gosh, I really need to know how to share her, how to say her last name. So, but it's the book, it's called Why Her? It's available on amazon.com. Also, I'm encouraging you uh, to please consider uh, supporting my online boutique. It's called Such a Lady Online Boutique.com. And what I do is I create handcrafted products. So you see this beautiful circle swing skirt. I call her Keisha. And guess what? I can customize this skirt or really any type of skirt to fit your exact waist measurements. So I invite you to just take a look at my website. I'm actually raising funds to go on my first mission trip to Uganda. That's right. I'm going to be going to Uganda later this summer. I'll be working with a uh, ministry called um, Camp David, and we're going to be going to Uganda to help um, kids who have parents that are incarcerated. And uh, we'll be teaching them um, about the Lord and we'll also be teaching them how to sew. So that's right. I'm going to be leading sewing classes for young girls who have their mom. Their moms are incarcerated. And so I'm excited about teaching them a skill. So if you would like to help me with this mission trip, if you would like to send in a donation, the information is on the screen. Hopefully you can see it. But I tell you what, if you go to my website at inspiredoverflow.com, you can donate there. So you guys, I pray that you were blessed tonight. I had a wonderful time sharing with you. And so um, guess what? We'll just close out. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time together. I pray, God, that you bless my sisters, God. I pray, Lord, um, that God, you just uh, continue to just search their hearts. And um, God, I thank you, Lord, um, that every bondage has been broken by your word. And I declare, God, that they are free. And I declare, God, that they will love um, each other. God, I declare, Lord, that there won't be any division between us, Father. And I just thank you, God, that, Lord, we're all working together to just point the way to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, be blessed. Talk to you later.